Welcome back to Anatomy and Physiology on Catalyst University. My name is Kevin Tokoff. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. In this video, we're going to talk about physical exercise and how that causes changes in respiration, particularly regular ventilation, which has to do with how deep you're breathing and the rate of breathing. Okay? Now, in the past, we've talked about just breathing in general. We haven't really added any kind of physical stressor to that. Okay? We talked about how when we inhale, the path that air travels. Of course, during exhalation, we simply reverse that. But one thing I want to make sure that you guys understand is when we're talking about the larynx, the trachea, and all three of the bronchi, so pretty much everything above this line right here, these structures cannot change their diameter they have a requirement of remaining patent, P-A-T-E-N-T. -E Remember that patent means just open, and they're permanently open. You do not want any of these structures to close. In fact, you don't want anything down here to close either. But these structures up here have to remain open uh, because if they close, then you don't get air down into your lungs, or deep into your lungs, I should say. And one of the things that keeps these structures open permanently are all these cartilages. Right? If you look at all of these, you see these little pieces of cartilage everywhere. Uh, they're certainly prominent and visible on the trachea, but of course on the primary, secondary, and tertiary bronchi, we see them as well. Okay? That cartilage that keeps them patent also prevents one other thing. Not only does it prevent them from closing, but it also generally prevents them from adjusting their diameter. In other words, you can't regulate the diameter of anything from the tertiary bronchi up. Their diameter is non-negotiable from the body's perspective. However, if we go to the bronchioles and everything below that, their diameter is able to be regulated because bronchioles, whether it's a terminal bronchial, respiratory bronchial, whatever, they don't have cartilage. Bronchioles do not have cartilage. Therefore, you can regulate their diameter. Now, let me ask you a question. Do you ever want these to close? No, you do not want these to ever close. However, what we can do is we can dilate them. So they're always going to be open to some extent, they're, but they're also going to have some degree of constriction. Okay, Not totally constricted such that they're closed, but just a little constriction. Their diameter is going to be maintained. So what happens if we have physical exercise, particularly high intensity physical exercise? Suppose you were to go right now and run as fast as you can down the street. What do you know would happen? Well, of course, I don't care if it's Usain Bolt or you. It doesn't matter if you're the most fit person in the world. You go run as fast as you can down the street for as long as you can, your respiratory rate is going to exponentially increase, both the rate of breathing and the depth of breathing. And we're gonna discuss, first of all, in brief terms why that happens, but also the response to the respiratory tract, specifically the bronchioles. Hopefully we know this by now, exercise creates an increase in oxygen demand by the body and also generates a lot of carbon dioxide, a waste product. Now, oxygen generally does not regulate the rate and depth of breathing. CO2 is the molecule that actually has that job. Okay? Uh, but remember, if you're exercising, I don't care if it's resistance training or sprinting or anything like that, skeletal muscles are very metabolically active and they're going to be uh, producing a lot of carbon dioxide. Okay, so the respiratory system is going to have to meet that demand for oxygen, but also expirate that higher quantity of CO2. So whenever the carbon dioxide level increases in the blood, which you see at the onset of high intensity exercise, just exercise in general, the chemoreceptors in the aorta and some arteries are going to detect those changes. So there are chemoreceptors in your body that can detect the amount of carbon dioxide in blood. Carbon dioxide in high amounts is bad because it acidifies the blood. And of course, we know what happens with lots of acid. Proteins denature and you're in serious trouble. Those chemoreceptors detect the elevated CO2 and they send impulses to the respiratory center in the brain, specifically the medulla oblongata. Okay? When those respiratory centers are stimulated, they're going to send nerve impulses to the diaphragm and the chest muscles. And of course, that's going to stimulate an increased rate and depth of breathing. And that's going to help lower the carbon dioxide in the blood. In other words, when you have high amounts of carbon dioxide in the blood, 
your body's going to respond by increasing the ventilation depth and increasing the ventilation rate. Both of those factors combined are going to help to bring CO2 levels back down to normal. So anytime CO2 levels increase, your rate of breathing and depth of breathing will increase as well. However, there's another issue here. Okay? If you're having to get rid of a lot of CO2 and you're having to intake a lot of oxygen to supply all of your tissues because they're metabolically active, you're pretty much limited by the diameter of all the tubing in your bronchial tree, right? Because if you're just at baseline diameter, now of course you can't close anything, but if you're just at the baseline diameter, you're of course limited by how fast the air can move in and out. Now you obviously don't want to constrict them anymore, so what's the natural thing that you'd want to do? If you want to increase the amount of air that's going in and out of the respiratory tract, it would make sense to dilate part of the respiratory tract. Now I've already mentioned that the tertiary bronchi and everything up here cannot be regulated for its diameter. That's true. Okay? But I can actually dilate everything down here, all the bronchioles. So it turns out that whenever you have physical exercise, the bronchioles dilate. And this process we call bronchodilation. Very important a term to understand, um, this is actually, you'll see prescribed bronchodilators that are used for asthma, because in asthma, sometimes what will happen is actually some of these tubing, including the bronchi, can actually constrict a little bit. There actually is a little tiny amount of constriction that you can have in the trachea. It's actually a muscle internal called the trachealis muscle, um, that when it gets irritated by environmental pathogens and all sorts of stuff, irritants, constricts it a little bit. So bronchodilators help to actually um, keep your airways open, okay? But that, they're not generally regulated. Only the bronchioles are regulated. But they're regulated by bronchodilation. And so what bronchodilation does is it widens the diameter of the tubing, of the bronchioles, and allows increased airflow through the respiratory tree due to bronchodilation of the bronchial tubes. Now this can occur through multiple mechanisms, and I got a picture here to illustrate this. So right here we have a baseline uh, bronchial tube. Okay, um, it's obviously blown up a lot. So this dark red represents the wall of the tube, and this light red in the middle represents the actual lumen, which is where the air is moving. Now of course you see that it's not closed. Okay, of course it's not closed. It can't be right. It's open to some extent. However. Whenever your body detects that you actually need to increase uh, the diameter of those bronchial tubes, in other words, a fight or flight response, the brain via the sympathetic nerve, sympathetic nerve actually innervates the bronchial tubes, and it's actually going to release norepinephrine, it's going to bind to adrenergic receptors on the bronchial tubes, and it causes them to dilate. Now remember, when you're in a fight or flight response or just regular exercise, you're running from a threat, right? You need to get more air into your lungs and out of your lungs. So that sympathetic nerve, which is associated with the fight or flight response, it makes sense. It's going to release norepinephrine and bronchodilate this, so we get something like this, where there's increased airflow, okay? Now, there is another way that this can actually happen, although this is a minor effect normally. The adrenal medulla, so this is uh, part of the adrenal gland that sits atop each of the kidneys. Um, during a fight or flight response, it will release epinephrine into the blood. It turns out that epinephrine has a minor effect of also augmenting the effect of the sympathetic nerve, and epinephrine can also cause bronchodilation. Okay? This is also important to understand because a lot of bronchodilators will also mimic the effects of epinephrine. Um, and so when you take them in high concentrations, they can actually artificially cause bronchodilation. The other reason this is important is you have what's called an EpiPen. Now this has nothing to do with physical exercise, but there are cases where if you have environmental irritants that get into the respiratory tract, they can cause the respiratory tract to constrict because the respiratory tract, from its point of view, it doesn't want those irritants to go deeper into the lungs, so it constricts. So what you can actually do is get an EpiPen, eject that stuff, epinephrine's in your blood, and it will cause bronchodilation and allow the person to breathe, even though that irritant is probably still there, because of course, if you can't breathe, you're dead, All right? So hopefully this gives you a little understanding of how physical exercise relates to breathing, or I really should say ventilation right here. But in general, 
It's the bronchioles that actually are able to be regulated for their diameter. Everything above the bronchial level, the bronchi and the trachea and larynx, are covered in cartilage, and that cartilage keeps them open and really prevents them from dilating any further. Okay. Bronchioles are what are regulated, and if you want to get more in air in and out of the lungs, do bronchodilation, which can be accomplished mainly through the sympathetic nerve during a fight-or-flight response. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. Thank you very much.